The Predator franchise was broken, so how can one movie turn everything around? Prey found a way. 2018's The Predator felt like the final fatal hit to a franchise that had been bleeding out for years. Now, Dan Trachtenberg, the director of 10 Cloverfield Lane, has picked up the scent of the iconic alien hunter and is going back a few hundred years with Prey. The new film sees Comanche warrior Naru, played by Amber Midthunder, square off with everyone's favorite space invader to protect her home and obtain honor within her tribe. Thankfully, early reactions and critical responses confirm that Prey isn't just a great watch, but the best entry in the franchise since the first one. I've been practicing. It's time. I'm ready. Avoiding the traps that so many big prequels have been caught in over the years, Prey sends us down a very different trail than the previous films, and is all the better for it. In 1987, John McTiernan's Predator did something no other action movie had prior. It made you genuinely scared for the safety of Arnold Schwarzenegger. The Austrian oak who had made a career out of being indestructible became anything but, fighting to survive as a lone soldier Dutch. In an almost dialogue-free finale that had the role of hunter and hunted changing on a dime. The thrill of the chase between a lone human and a technologically advanced beast was a highlight. But it was a plot beat that became stale in the franchise entries that followed. Where the underrated Predators aside, too much time was spent on each film's trophies to be, trying to figure out what they were getting tracked by. Trachtenberg's blood-soaked session avoids that mistake, instead giving the dreadlocked Death Dealer a worthy opponent in the form of Naru, who quickly concludes that something else besides her tribe is out hunting. I'm not frightened by a bear. I don't think it was a bear. This lets the film cut to the chase that fans are keen to see between the two lone hunters, just like before. It's a clear indicator that time is unquestionably on Trachtenberg's side, including when it comes to the film's setting, which resets the history of the Predator in all the best ways. As much as we try to forget it, a flimsy flashback in Alien vs Predator showed the titular trophy seekers building pyramids. The issue is that they are as tooled up then as they are when they encounter Dutch in the 1987 film, raising the question of whether or not their routine safari trips were really a challenge. Thankfully, Prey retcons that smudge in the history books for a less developed predator, which in turn gives Prey an unexpected upgrade. The space hunter with Naru in its sights is a clear ancestor of the ones we're used to, mandibles and all brandishing headgear that looks to be made from the skins of its former kills rather than that unmistakable faceplate establishes a technological timeline for the alien race. Doing so tightens the gap between both sides, still certifying the Predator as a threat, but one more likely to bleed thanks to its low-tech arsenal. Trachtenberg told Collider, It was very tricky to find a way to have the Predator feel, at once, 300 years earlier in iteration and in what it has to wield but also feel far more advanced than what our characters are used to and have ever dealt with before. It's an exciting take on the creature that also suggests the future of the franchise might be in the past. Prey has revived the franchise to its former glory by putting the legendary Bone Collector in an era we've never seen it in before. It's a game-changing choice that also opens up other historical possibilities for the Predator. Prey chronicles the oldest known hunt of the franchise's violent visitors. But it doesn't mean it was the first. How might the iconic aliens have handled samurai warriors? Did this race that thrives in the heat of battle ever go up against Vikings? If not, why not? Should such an approach be taken, it would be great to see any follow-up film have the same attention to detail as Prey, one that could focus on a culture that until now has been given skewed or little representation in mainstream media, setting up an all the more compelling story because of it. Prey gives us a new take on an old foe by dropping a predator into a story populated predominantly by Native American stars, including its lead. The creative choice spawned from the image of Sonny Lantham's Billy, Dutch's Native American scout, and his last stand in the 1987 film. 35 years later, it still resonated with Dan Trachtenberg, who told Empire, in Prey, we're watching someone lead this movie that has never led this type of movie before. To ensure such a crucial part of the film was carefully handled, Comanche and Blackfeet American Indian producer Jane Myers joined the project, operating as the film's cultural advisor. Her input changed the potential franchise Money Spinner into one of the most intriguing installments to the Predator franchise to date. In a rare move in Hollywood, a Comanche language cut of the film will also be available to stream upon release.
Whenever these spine-snatching stalkers have visited Earth on screen, women have often been the least of their worries. With El Padilla, Carrillo's Anna from the original film not being deemed a threat, and Maria Conchita Alonso's Leona getting passed over for the sake of her unborn baby in Predator 2, it was left to the tough men of Hollywood to put the Yautja in check. Prey finally breaks those dated hunting traditions in the best ways possible. Thanks to not only one of the best performances in the franchise, but also one that fleshes out a character at the core of a story worth investing in. Why do you want to hunt? Because you all think that I can't. Whereas the previous films were about fighting for survival against an invisible threat, Prey focuses on a hero determined to prove herself even before the iconic tri-laser gets fired up. Naru wants to be respected in her tribe. So much so that she's willing to go up against a grisly, bear-disposing monster from the skies to get her. The safety of her people is an understandable concern, but seeing her fight for her self-worth is an added element that puts Prey on a different playing field than the other Predator films. And it's thanks to Amber Mid-Thunder that it all works so well.